Did you just recently pick up one of these awesome kits? If you did, in this tutorial right here, I'm gonna show you how to paint a very simple wet on wet technique done in the Bob Ross style coming at you right now. Hey, Wild coming at you for my creative control playlist where I try to bring you best tips, tricks, and even paint alongs just like this right here. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing to unlock your creative potential because we're always doing fun things here. If you're new to the wet on wet technique and you just got yourself one of these kits because they've been on sale recently, I'm gonna show you how to do a very, very simple beginner's painting. Now I do recommend that you actually do the Bob Ross painting that's in the kit first just because you'll have a really magical how the hell does he do it moment. And that's what makes Bob Ross really fun. But when you've done that painting and you want a little confidence boost, come back to this video and accomplish one of these because I'm gonna show you how to make a simple sunset ocean painting with very few colors and very few techniques that you can easily master in just a little bit of time. And in this 20 minute tutorial, you're gonna rock it out. Let's go to our canvas. Alrighty, we went ahead and already coated our canvas with magic white and it's wet and ready to go. As you can see on my fingers, it's all good right there. The colors that we're gonna be using today are Phthalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Yellow, Van Dyke Brown, and Titanium White. If you wanna use any other colors, feel free to do so, but this is just a basic painting, and a lot of you guys should have these paints in your kit. We're gonna start off with a one inch brush here. Just gonna use a one inch brush. And we're gonna go straight into our cadmium yellow and start pulling that down. And we just want a very light coat in here that's just thoroughly coated and tap it all into the bristles there. And we're gonna establish our sun is over here. And we're just gonna cross stroke that down and out over here. There we go. Then we're going to go straight into our Lizard and Crimson. We're just going to pull that down really quick. Tap that in there with that same dirty brush. It's going to get a little orangey color here. I'm going to come up here and just start cross stroking right up here. We're going to leave a little bit of a barrier right between there. We're just going to do that one little line. We're going to come back and reload our brush just a tiny bit here. This way we get a little more dark red as we get further away. There we go. Now we're going to come into our phthalo blue. Just a tiny, tiny bit. Tiny bit. Get it on the bristles there. Tiny bit. And we're going to come back to this red. So this way we get a little bit of a purple lavender color here that we're just going to put in here. This is just going to be our dark little transition point. Dark little transition point, that's all it is. And now we can come back up to our phthalo blue. And tap back into here. Get all that blue right on there. Tap nice and hard. Come up here, we're gonna work from this corner down. There we go, and let's pull that blue down into that purple area right there. And there we go. Now we're ready for a two inch brush. And we're gonna blend the yellow up into the red, the red up into this purple, and the purple up into the blue. All we're gonna do is just use big cross strokes here, and this is gonna get us a nice satin color that just looks nice and smooth all the way across. Let's pull this color down into the horizon, and let's move our way up to our red, and just slowly blend those colors together, just like that. Keep that paintbrush moving. Pull that nice and down into here and let's move up into our blue and the purples. Get those to blend nicely. There we go. Now move up and straight to that corner. There we go. And there we've got a beautiful transition. Now let's work the color off on the brush really quick. Just tap it out on a loose rag or paper towel. I'm just gonna blend down here really quick and then all the way across. Just work out that excess color that I don't need. Now with a three inch brush, or you can use a six if you want, we're just gonna put some basic clouds in here. These are very faint, 
and it's kind of sunset -y. so we're going to load up our paintbrush here see how i wiggle it through that paint get a nice even coating on both sides and then if you want an easy way to do clouds go ahead and dip that corner in on both sides so that way it gets a little extra paint on the sides and figure out where you want to put a cloud i'm just going to do a simple one right over here and just concentrate on that outer edge this is just very faint clouds that's all i'm going for for today there we go maybe bring them a little over here there we go if you get any contamination you can just wipe it off on a paper towel i'm just going to wipe it a little off on the mixing palette right there there we go and i'm going to put i'm going to tap in just a faint cloud over here as well just coming down maybe he's got a little bottom end right there there we go maybe just fades right off from there so we did two different styles we did one with whipping in and one with tapping in take our two inch brush we're going to use just the top part of the bristles here and just blend in just the bottom part here very very soft don't have to put much pressure for this cloud so it's barely even on there with with barely any paint come down here and do the same small circular motions small circular motions i'm gonna pull them down and blend down in this corner flip over my corners a little blue in the brush i could have cleaned it off a little bit more but it's fine it's fine some of that blue could have scattered across we don't know i'm just gonna blend it down and in a little bit and i'm gonna blend this cloud down into us just so it shapes a little more of that body on there. Don't worry about the blobs yet. Don't worry about the blobs. Just worrying about getting form in our cloud. There we go. And now we can give it a little bit of a lift. And this is the wind. Just a little bit of a lift, barely touching my canvas. And work out those paint strokes. And there we've got very, very soft clouds that we have. Now we can use the same dirty brush here and we're gonna go into our brown color right here. Grab just a tiny bit of that yellow. Tiny bit of the red, just to warm up the class of that hue right there. There we go. And we're going to start shaping in very, very distant hills here. And we're going to pull this down a little bit because we're going to put another little hill right in front of this. Be afraid to pull down that color within the brush that's sitting on those bristles there. Same dirty brush. Let's go into our little bit of our white. Wiggle the color through. Now we can start giving a little bit of its shape. Just putting some over in here. Some of the sunlight hits right off of here. We're just using a little bit of the corner of the brush. Go up here, grab just a tiny bit of yellow. Both sides. Let's put some yellow in here now we can come back with this one inch brush and slowly just use a little bit of the bristles since it has more 
and shape in these little far distant foothills back here. And we're gonna tap the base of this down. We don't care what happens at the bottom here, we don't care. I'm gonna follow it up in this ridge side here. Slowly pull this color up and get it all nice and silky smooth. Make sure you follow the shape of these hills though. There we go. Still same dirty brush, but we're gonna wipe a little of that excess color over here. We're gonna grab a little of this blue, a little of this purple, and then go into our brown. Wiggle that color through. Since things are getting closer to us, they should get a little darker to us. We come up here, we're gonna shape in another little hill. We're gonna come up a little higher, come down, come through, and down right there. Let's bring it over right in there. Get a little more of our brown on our brush. Let all these colors play. That's what makes it all nice and fun here. Block in more of this. And start pulling this a little more down because I'm going to add a little more cliffside on here. A little blue, a little red in certain spots. This will just add a lot of texture into here. And all I'm doing is just shaping in and blocking in all of this. Just to give me a general idea so I can see it. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean off this brush a little bit. It's really quick, wipe it off in some thinner. It's not, doesn't have to get that clean. We're gonna go back right into our white right here. We're gonna use the corner. We're gonna come down here and start shaping in certain sides of this hill. Where we think sunlight may hit it in certain aspects, just ever so slightly. And you can dab these on to give a little more texture. Don't be afraid to show the paint strokes. Wipe our paintbrush off here. And we're gonna go into a blue, brown, and a red color. And we're gonna come down here and mix that down here. A little more brown. We're gonna start making a little bit of a shadow color to throw in here, just a little bit. Get all these bristles nice in here. And we're gonna use the same corner, except we're just gonna kind of fan it and scrub in here a little bit. Now you don't wanna cover up all that brown. This is just to give a little bit of an accent. You can swirl, you can scrub. You can do a few different techniques here. But I'm trying to give the impression 
And some shadows live way, way, way back here. Reload your brush if you need to. Remember, play with the angles of hills and mountains here. If you need to clean up anything, clean off your brush and wipe it dry. And then if you need a cleaning thing, it's just easy to kind of just spin down here and clean up some loose edges if you need to. Take our one inch brush and we're gonna tap down thusly so this way we soften the base of here. We don't care what happens at the base of our mountain at all. Just follow the shapes, follow the basic shapes here. And don't be afraid to push and pull, push and pull because we want to pull in this general direction to soften up this base side here. And when you have what you like, we're gonna slowly pull up. Now you notice I didn't pull down with my brush on this side because it's closer, it's gonna have a little more refined edge, some harshness to it, and it kind of makes it fun having all the little texture up there in the mountain. Don't be afraid to make your own little fun rules. That's what makes painting fun. We're gonna blend this down here, get it nice and smooth. There we go. Next, we're gonna go up here in the yellow. It's okay, that's got a little bit of brown here. Tap it down and in. Get a good coating on both sides here. And we're gonna come up here and we're gonna find a little bright spot and pull. We're gonna pull pretty much all the way down. And then we're gonna follow this bank here. I'm gonna create a little cove. And then as the color starts to fade, we're gonna transition over to our red I'm gonna tap up here, pull it down into our, our yellow real quick. Reload and pull down on here. Flip the brush over if you need a little more color. There we go, pull that color down. Look at those ribbons of color we got. And now we're gonna go over to our blue and tap into that. And pull this all the way down. Make sure we get that blue deep over here. Nice deep color blue. We're gonna take our two inch brush. I'm just gonna get a little bit of white on it. Just a tiny bit of white. Just like that. We're gonna come over here and pull. A little bit, pull, and just lighten up that little spot there since that's our bright spot. And we're just making this velvety smooth and transition these colors. You can even do 
little X's down here if you'd like. Let's go grab just a little bit more of that white and pull. Just wanna soften these soft colors back here. A little more white and pull. There we go. Even grab a little for this blue back here, right here and pull. That just softens up that transition and the colors. There we go. Just work in this water. There we go. Now we're gonna take our number, or sorry, we're gonna take our palette knife here. It's all right if you have some of these dull colors here, it's all right. We're gonna come down and pull just like that. And we're gonna cut right across the top so that we have a little bit of paint on here. And we're gonna start leading in some indications that there's just water way back here, just splashing in. If you wanna add little ribbons of color that look like there's waves, flip the knife over tilt it down a little bit and start cutting. And you see how it leaves that whitewash indication, like water's kind of ro rolling in or rolling out from the shoreline there. You can do different effects. It's completely up to you. I like to mix them. Now the water's getting a little closer to us. Add a little crackling of waves in here, just ever so slightly. Make sure you take the knife in both directions because the waves do travel different ways. Since this is further back than this, we're just gonna fade this in ever so slightly because we don't want our eye to be directed towards that. And you can see I got a little color of blue here. That's fine, Just we'll just add a little white on top of it just like that and nobody will know. That's just a secret between you and me. If you get any big blobs of paint, just work them off your paintbrush. There we go, just softly right there. Gonna take just the small part of my knife here and just create just a little more of a cove back here. That way it looks like the water's actually resting into something. There we go. We're gonna clean off our one inch brush. We're gonna come up here. We're gonna grab all the remaining yellow. Right there, a little bit of red. And then we're gonna grab this brown here. We're gonna make a little bit of sand color. But since it's sunset-y, we're just gonna pull it in from the right and from down here at the bottom. So we're just gonna introduce a little bit of sand and I'm just blocking in this color because I don't really know where it's gonna be. There we go. So now we got beautiful brown color down here. I'm gonna add a little more red just down here at the base. There we go. Cause this is wet sand in my mind. There we go. Gonna take our two inch brush and pull our water down into it. Don't worry about the scratch marks yet. Wipe off the brush, pull it down, and we're slowly gonna fade this in because those marks will become looking like some parts of water are just coming right over that and that's it. There we go, and just feather that in, just feather it in. Literally from out to in, out to in, that's all I'm doing. Clean up this side right here, there we go.
Now we're going to take all this dirty white that we have here, and this is what we're going to use to make our shoreline here. So just like I showed you before, we're going to pull down and use this, and we're sort of going to create parts where water's kind of just washed up here. I'm gonna grab some of the stark white now. Put some right over here. Just adding little indications of ripples. Flip it over. Blend this down here. Since this is fading off, I don't want my eye to be directed to the outside of my painting. I want to look towards the center. With a clean fan brush, we're just gonna take this paint and we're gonna pull it towards our water. Just pull it towards our water. And let those browns, yellows, oranges all mix. We're grabbing the back of what we put down here and that's what's gonna look like whitewash is rolling up on our sand. It's very easy to do. Hey, thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys liked that tutorial. And remember, you don't have to be limited by anything that I use. You can do a bright one, you can do a dark one, you can do cliffs, you can do hills and mountains, you can do water and sand, you can do water and rocks. It's completely up to you and that's what makes it fun. These are just more or less guidelines to help you get a confidence boost. And if you haven't had a chance to go pick up one of these kits, make sure you do. I will put a link in the description below where you can buy them on Amazon, but at Hobby Lobby is a great place to pick them up when they're on discount if you can find it. But I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of assistance so that way you get a little bit of a confidence boost to keep on making those excellent paintings. Once again, my name is Wild. If you guys need any more help, feel free to leave a comment below and you can follow me on my social media on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to watch me paint, I paint usually Monday through Friday on Twitch. If you guys want to drop by and wish me luck on my painting adventures, I would so much enjoy it. Have a good one, guys, and take care and peace.